In the last couple of years, my tiling window manager of choice has been Xmonad. I've lived primarily in Xmonad uh, at least for the last couple of years, but recently I decided to go back to what is probably my second favorite tiling window manager of all time, and that's what we're looking at right now. This is Qtile. Qtile began life many years ago as essentially an Xmonad clone. The developers, they decided they liked Xmonad, everything about it, the function, the feel, but they wanted to write their tiling window manager using Python rather than Haskell. And because I'm not a Pythonista, I'm not that great at Python scripting, but I would like to get better at it, I thought, you know what, for the next several weeks, or maybe even the next several months, I'm going to switch back to Qtile. I'm going to go back and live in Qtile primarily, both on the computer here at my office, my workstation here, as well as my personal computer at home. So it, I've been working on my Qtile config, because the last time that I really lived in Qtile long term, not just, you know, logging in for a few hours just to checking up on things, the last time I really lived in Qtile was probably in the early days of this YouTube channel, which was started nearly six years ago, right? So it's been a long time and I needed to go back and actually take a look at my Qtile config because there were some errors in it. There, there were some things that I really, th there were some unexpected bugs in it. And the reason there was some bugs in it is Qtile does see active development. So it does change over time. The uh, configuration file has changed a lot over the probably nearly 10 years I've probably been using Qtile on and off. I remember in the early days of Qtile, for example, instead of defaulting to numbers for the workspaces, they actually defaulted to the home row letters on the keyboard, ASDF, and you know, all of that instead of one, two, three, four. I remember in the early days of Qtile, I believe the default a layout was your standard master and stack layout, which they call Monad Tall. But these days, when I look at a default Qtile config, they're actually using like a stack layout or a columned layout by default. So again, things change over time. Uh, libraries get deprecated, new libraries get created. So what I decided to do is since my old config had some bugs, I started with a brand new config. So what I did, Anybody that wants to get into Qtile, or really any window manager, what you can do is typically you'll find default configs for most programs, but especially for your window managers. Look for them in slash user, slash share, slash doc, and then slash name of program. In this case, it'll be Qtile. And in this directory, there is default underscore config dot pi. So there is the default config. So if you don't have a uh, config in your home directory in .config slash Qtile, uh, by default it'll read the default config.py that's in that directory in user share doc Qtile. Now one of the first things I wanted to focus on when I was rewriting my new config, let me zoom back out my new config so you can see the two side by side here is the default config when you get to the key bindings, this keys block here, keys equals, and then you got the opening bracket. You know, this is not a lengthy list of key bindings, right? So it's, it's not a lot of key bindings in the default config. And of course, uh, if you've ever looked at any of my tiling window manager configs, I have a ton of key bindings. So I actually went and added, and here's my keys. And if I just, you know, scroll down a little bit, well, scroll down too far, but it's a pretty big block. It's as you keep scrolling, you know, it's three times the size as the default uh, keys here. And one of the things I was doing in my old config uh, that was kind of broken was key chords, because by default, you can use key chords in Qtile, which is one of the really neat things about about Qtile, and it's also a neat thing about Xmonad, which Xmonad has the same uh, built-in feature where you can just use key chords out of the box. And you can see right here, I'm using a key chord, mod E, so that's super E followed by another key. So super E followed by E launches Emacs and super E followed by A launches Emacs, uh, the EMMS audio player, the music player that's built into Emacs. Super E B would launch the iBuffer uh, program inside Emacs. You can see all this super E 
followed by another key. All these key bindings, they're Emacs related programs. And then I have super P followed by various letters. And this is the DM scripts. So super P you can think as prompt, right? Because D menu, Rofi, you know, that's basically a run launcher. It's really a run prompt. So super P followed by these letters runs various DM scripts. And I can show you this in action. Super P H will launch the DM hub, right? Escape out of that. Super P I launches the uh, DM main program which is actually a screenshot program so dpi for basically image right screenshots you can do super p m to search for a man page or get a random man page if i'm really nerding out i actually want to read the effing manual now the problem in my old config was there was an error somewhere and i don't know where the error was but there was something that caused my old config to bug out using key chords uh, it, it was a really strange error because the very first time you used a key chord after logging into Qtile. So imagine I just logged into Qtile and this is the very first key chord I ever hit is super P H. You know, it, it will work and I, you know, I'll do whatever I needed to do with that particular program. But then all of my super key key bindings after that don't work as far as the workspace related key bindings. Like I'm on workspace two. If I wanted to move to workspace one, super one takes me to workspace one. Super two brings me back. All of these key bindings stop working after me running a key chord program the very first time. What I had to do to fix that is I just always knew that the very first time I hit a, a key chord key binding, after that my super keys would quit working until I restarted Qtel. And it only happened the very first time. After that you could keep using your key chords and everything would work, but it was just a weird little bug and I couldn't figure it out. And I know other people also had the same kind of key chord related problem. But oddly enough, when I rewrote my config, I guess the problem, whatever the problem was, fixed itself because I didn't import everything into my new config. I, I wasn't trying to, to basically make the new config like my old config. I wanted to try some new things out. But it looks like that problem has solved itself. Once you get past the uh, key binding section of the config, you know, you have your groups. So groups are essentially workspaces. Uh, Qtile calls them groups. And my groups section is this section here. There's, there's a lot going on in this because the default config, if I move over to the default config for Qtile, this is the group section, right? It's, it's much smaller. You have groups equals uh, I for I in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's your workspaces, one through nine. And then for I in groups, you know, set the key bindings for super plus the number, super shift plus the number. And originally, because I started with the default config, I was going to use this. I was just going to use the numbers, which I am using the numbers. I was just going to use their default code, but I didn't like a couple of things about this. For one thing, their default code has this here, lazy window to group, switch group equals true. So what this does is when I send a window somewhere, so imagine I have a terminal open. So if I do super shift three, it's, it should send that window to workspace three, super shift three, right? That terminal window is now on workspace three, which is hidden. It's not on any of my monitors right now. If I do super three, I can go take a look at it. Super two, back to workspace two. Super three, we'll go look at it again. If I do super shift two, I send it back to workspace two. Super two, I'll go back to workspace two where both the windows are. But this config, the default config has this weird thing that I don't think was the case when I was initially trying out Qtile all those years ago, where if this is set to true, what it does is, is if I hit super shift three to send that terminal to workspace three, it actually brings workspace three to the terminal, meaning essentially it puts the terminal on workspace three. It also uh, takes focus of this monitor to workspace three and it was just weird because you could have already other things on workspace three and it, it was just it was like everything was backwards every time i was trying to move windows around the opposite of what i thought was going to happen happened and i found that a very odd kind of workflow so one of the things i wanted to do was make sure in my config i have the switch group equals false because that's the kind of standard way that pretty much every tiling window manager I've ever used kind of handles sending those windows to a new workspace. The other thing I did with the groups is instead of having this uh, groups equals I for I and one through nine and a range of one through nine, you know, I just have the group names 
specified right in a list so group names and group labels group labels is actually what is being displayed here and you can see I have three different group labels but if I got rid of the numbers and wanted to go back to actually naming the workspaces because this is how I originally did it although it looks like I've got one too many workspaces one two three four five six seven eight nine yeah, okay. I'm, I'm glad I caught that error. I'll have to push that to my GitLab when I'm done. But if I do a restart, you can see we can switch back to workspace names. Here are actual words for the group labels. But for me, I like simplicity just to save on space. I'm kind of digging just using the actual numbers for the workspaces one through nine. After the group section of the config comes the layouts section. So this is where you specify all the layouts that you want to use, you know, because it's a dynamic tiler. So you can have these predefined layouts. So like the master and stack layout or the max layout or the monocle layout, whatever you want to call it, a full screen layout. You can have a uh, grid layout or, you know, there, there's a ton of various tiling window manager layouts, right? Well, at Qtile has a layout lot of them available but it only actually has two out of the box that are enabled the uh, default columned layout which again I thought they were using the master and stack by default years ago when I first tried this window manager but the, the column layout it's not something I would ever use and then they have the max layout which is something most people will find a need for sometimes you just want the window to be max right you want it full screen so you know you want to get rid of the bar and everything just make a one window the window with focus of the entire screen but the master and stack layout which is monad tall they have turned off by default and the stack layouts turned off the bsp wm kind of layouts turned off by default you know they have all these other really neat layouts well you know i went back and you know i've got my little block here and i actually turned on a lot of these the most important one was monad tall and i made sure monad tall was the very first layout in the list that is uncommented that way Monad tall will be the default layout unless I specify a certain workspace to have a another default layout other than Monad tall. But back in my groups list here, uh, group layouts, you can see I specified Monad tall would be the layout, the default layout for each group one through nine. Now, one of the trickiest parts to my configs is I'm I'm a triple monitor user, so I've got three monitors, and that makes actually configuring the bar and all the widgets in the bar kind of tough because you don't have a good example of how to do that anywhere in the default Qtile config. This is the bar. You use screens, so screens equals screen and then bottom equals bar dot bar. So bottom, by default, the panel is at the bottom. Well, obviously I want it at the top, so I'm going to change that in mine. But all of this happens on one screen. So uh, how you handle this triple monitor thing is basically I need like three of these. So what I've done is I have this uh, definition here. So I'm defining this function where I do the widget list. The widget list would be this section of their screens block here. Now mine is very long because I've got a lot going on. Lots of widgets, lots of things, right? So I have this widgets list that's very long of about nah, 30 different widgets uh, some of them are empty widgets spacers and things like that and then at the end i have uh, defined init widgets screen one init widgets screen two i have a triple monitor set up but two of the monitors will share the same bar and layout but one monitor the bar will be slightly different and the reason i have to do this is if i use a system tray the system tray applet on the panel only works on one bar on one monitor if you try to put it in all three bars on all three of my monitors what happens is it crashes it just errors out it'll be a big white box on the bar that says config error yada 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 so you know i have to basically eventually have three bars and they have three different widgets because the center bar returns everything in that widget list but the other two uh, panels their other two bars what i was doing is if it included the sysTray widget i was deleting widgets 9 and 10 from the list so there's like 29 widgets here widgets 9 and 10 were i scroll up 
Um, there's a cis tray here, right here. We've got it commented out. That's the cis tray and the separator right there. Those two widgets because I no longer needed them. But what I ended up doing is because it was causing me some issues in other areas, I got rid of the system tray uh, widget because honestly, I, I'm used to not using a, a system tray. Uh, for example, in DWM, you don't have a system tray available on the panel, right? DWM is very minimal. Honestly, in Xmonad, I didn't use a system tray for a long time because Xmobar doesn't have a system tray. You have to use a third party uh, tray program like uh, Trayer or Stallone tray or something like that. So I've, you know, I'm used to just living without a system tray. So I finally just decided, you know what, I'm going to get rid of the sys tray. Another reason I got rid of the sys tray widget is because it does not like transparency. You probably noticed I have a little transparency in this bar because the Qtile panel does accept uh, true transparency as far as the background colors. And I have that set in my colors up here. See, I have this here. Of course, that is RGBA, right? Red, green, blue, alpha. And what you want to do to get true transparency is in the screen section, if I scroll back down where I finally have the screens listed right here the three different screens the three different panels the bars right make sure you have background equals zero 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 in all of your panels what this is is absolute transparency right that would be a completely transparent bar so make sure you set the background to that and then when you're defining your colors and your widgets you know and the various widgets have a color colors that you can assign. You can see background colors equals zero. Well, background colors zero is this, and that is a little bit of transparency as uh, the EE -E at the end is a very slight transparency. CC is a little more transparency because I actually can use a, a little bit of a gradient. If you wanted to really see this, I mean, I could make this one absolutely transparent. And you can see it starts out with slight transparency and then fades to absolute <laughs> transparency, right? Uh, that's a little jarring. Let's try something a little more subtle. Yeah, yeah, that's not bad as well. For me, I just like a tinge of transparency. You know, I like my bar slightly transparent. I like my Emacs slightly transparent. I like my cocky slightly transparent. Uh, I don't have my Alacrity terminal. Uh, set to be transparent, but I could turn that on if I wanted. And that's about it that I've changed to the default config, uh, the rest of the config here at the end with the, some of the mouse rules uh, and floating layouts, floating rules, all of this, all of this was default. The only other thing I added to the config was this little definition here, start once, and it's uh, basically subprocess call. So this is a Python uh, function to call a shell process and what I want you to do is I want you to run this script autostart.sh because I have this uh, basically it's just a bash script yeah, let me show it to you if I can navigate to it it's just this little bash script where it runs all of these shell commands so starts the LX session starts PyCom starts the Emacs daemon uh, starts cocky starts various system tray applets but I'm not using a system tray at the moment so what I think I'm gonna do just comment these out because I'm really I'm convinced that going without the system tray is probably the best thing to do these days system tray applets have always been kind of wonky on every panel I've ever tried uh, it was always a hassle getting any kind of system tray patching done with DWM the sys tray on polybar is not easily configurable. I, I don't think you can actually uh, specify a placement on the bar. I think it always has to be at the end of the bar. Xmobar doesn't have a um, uh, sys tray, but using things like Stallone tray and Trayer are really clunky because you have to create complicated scripts for those things to appear on the screen in the right spot compared to where the actual Xmobar is or Polybar, whatever it is you're, you're trying to use alongside it. Yeah, system trays. A little weird. Also, the system tray widget, again, had a bug in it to where uh, the system tray widget does not work if your panel is transparent. And so if you use any transparency at all in your panel, you cannot use the sys tray. Well, I, I say you can't. You can use it, but it looks really weird and really bad uh, because it has like a 
it's, it's, it's either an all white background or an all black background, but the icons themselves are actually fully transparent. It just bugs out. Uh, another thing with the SysTray is it's Xorg only, which I'm using Xorg obviously with Qtile, but Qtile does have a Wayland version and the system tray is a Xorg program. So if you were using Qtile on Wayland, you couldn't use that particular SysTray widget anyway. So for now, I've just got it commented out. So that's the config. Uh, one last thing I want to just briefly talk about is when I was going back and uh, you know starting with the default config, with the default key bindings for the configs, which I left a lot of the defaults in my current config, I did notice some of the behavior, uh, especially switching window focus and moving windows around in the stack is a little different than I think the defaults were a few years ago, because I did notice some peculiarities, like if I switch uh, to this workspace here, we're in the master and stack layout, right? The, the monad tall layout. If I hit J on the keyboard to you know navigate through the stack, that works. And K goes back the other direction. But it seems like that doesn't work in every layout. Like if I do super tab to go to a different layout, like this stack layout, right? This window over here on the right side has focus. But J, actually, there's a stack in the stack. There's Remember I had four windows open? Three of them are in that right stack. And J cycles through that. But how do I get to the window over there? Well, I don't have a way because super J and K obviously are just going up and down in the stack. And you would think, well, super H to go to the left, right? No, that is not set. Uh, I think what you have to do is, well, I'm going to have to get, actually go check the key bindings. It is, here's the super H, J, K, L space, mod space, super space, lazy layout next is the command, move window focus to the other window. So let's see if that works. So if I do super space, now I'm over in, I guess, the left stack. Super space gets me back in the right stack. Yeah, it's just kind of weird. Super tab would cycle through the rest of the layouts that I have in my config. Uh, another cool thing that I added, uh, Xmonad has the ability to shrink and expand windows up, down, left, and right, and things like that. Obviously, Qtile has that. Now, some of the key bindings that I was using for that kind of stuff were taken up by some of the default key bindings, and I didn't want to just go in and just overwrite all the default key bindings. So I decided I was actually going to use some different key bindings for this. So to expand a window, right, to make it grow, it's actually, that is the name of the function, is lazy grow window or something. I'd have to go check the config. I'm going to use super plus because I think that makes sense. When you grow uh, when you zoom in and out of text on a terminal emulator, on most terminal emulators, what's the key binding, the default key binding? It's control plus, control minus. Well, I'm going to use super plus and super minus for this. So if I do super plus on this middle window, super plus grows it. Super minus shrinks it, right? If I change focus and I do super plus on this one, you know, the bigger window, it grows. Super minus will shrink it back. So pretty cool little functionality uh, and not those functions or those key bindings are here so these were the ones I added mod equal mod minus so mod equal is lazy layout grow mod minus is lazy layout shrink and I specified that that key binding would be done in the monad tall and monad wide layouts because I have layout equals monad tall monad wide it's because I may those Key bindings don't really need to be in use for some of the other layouts like the BSP layout or the columns layout because those layouts actually require you to be able to move windows, uh, resize windows in all four directions using HJKL. And they've already, in the default Qtile config, they've already got that set to super control HJKL. Just, just some neat things you can do with key bindings. I think most people probably, if you're new to Qtile, most people probably don't know that you can actually set a key binding to do two different things. So that's just a little bit of what I've done with Qtile here in the last few days while I'm thinking about it. Let me add my latest configs to my dot files. Um, 
That way you guys can go over to my GitLab at gitlab.com slash dwt1 slash dot files and go to my dot files repo and look for the config.py that's going to be in my home directory slash dot config slash qtile slash config.py and you can check out my latest config that I've been working a lot on. I've I spent many hours in the last two days. Uh, by many, I mean probably six, seven hours rewriting that config from the ground up, slowly adding things, taking things away, seeing what I like, seeing what I don't like. Right now, I'm pretty happy with the panel, the transparency, all the widgets. I'm really happy with all the, the default key bindings and layouts and everything. And I'm, I'm really excited to be back in this thing, right? Because again, I, I haven't lived full time in Qtile in at least five years probably, because I've spent so much time in other window managers over the course of this channel. And here in the last couple of years, I just kind of settled, you know, <laughs> I've kind of settled on what was working. You know, kind of like I don't distro hop anymore. There came a time when I decided I wasn't going to window manager hop, you know, because I'd already had everything working in X modem. And then I was like, you know what, I'm just going to stay here. But now I'm kind of happy uh, to be back in Qtile. It's almost like coming home. And as I do more with this config, extend it, maybe start writing some of my own custom functions, and we really pimp this thing out because I'm pretty excited. I want to start playing a little more with Python programming in general, so this will be a good testing ground for that. As I do some of that stuff, of course, I'm going to get it on camera and you guys will get it as a video. And before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Gabe James Matt, Paul Royal, Wes, Armor Dragon, Commander Angry, George Lee, Methos Nate, Erion, Paul, Peace Arch and Fedora, Realities for Us, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul Astri, Tools, Devler, War Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie. <sighs> These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode you just watched would not have been possible. The show is brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen as well. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about free and open source software like Qtile, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys. I might even make you tell the default on DTOS.